Hey everyone and welcome back for another video. Today we're going to be looking at the auto-tuning our spark configurations in Microsoft Fabric. So in the last video I went into a bit of detail about how you can manually configure your spark runtime, your fabric runtime, everything to do with spark basically, the node sizing you want, the auto-scaling functionality, and if that was a little bit overwhelming for you, maybe you're coming from a Power BI background or a SQL background, you think, I don't want to have to worry about all that, then the good news is you don't, or at least you probably won't have to, because Microsoft have introduced this auto-tuning functionality. Let's just start by looking at the documentation and we can begin to understand what it's actually doing here. So. If you want more of a hands-off approach to managing your Spark configuration, you want to trust that Microsoft machine learning algorithms can tune your Spark configuration better than you can yourself, then this is the tool for you. And it says here, I'm just going to read from the documentation so we just have an understanding of, of what this thing is. So auto-tune automatically tunes Apache Spark configurations to minimize the workload execution time. So if you've got some really long running jobs, maybe you're training machine learning models or you're doing very heavy calculations, typically, especially join operations on very large data sets, then this is going to be a really good tool for you. And let's just understand what it's going to do is it's going to have a look at your historical runs so you have to run it a few times your your problem query let's say then what it's going to do is it's going to have a look at kind of the execution and the jobs and the tasks in that workload that you've been submitting historically and it's going to optimize your spark configuration to perform that workload more efficiently so what's it actually doing? So we've got three things here that it's going to be optimizing. It's the number of partitions that you've got for join and aggregates, basically. And then it's the join threshold. So a lot of these parameters you notice are around joining. And we did a video actually on joining, I can link to that above. And we didn't mention so much about the, kind of the performance implications of joining. Now this is particularly important on distributed data. Now, if you're work used to working in SQL, then joins are generally an expensive operation that you have to kind of be careful of. But that's even more so the case when your data is distributed across different nodes, right? Because it has to understand how to join across different nodes. And generally it's even more computationally expensive than it would be if everything was in one node. So it makes sense that this kind of auto-tuning is auto-tuning parameters that are specifically important for join operations. So the final one is this max partition bytes. So this one is about when you're reading files, it's basically the maximum size of each partition, the number of bytes that you can cram into each partition. And so that's going to help with kind of file loading times uh, from raw data into Spark data frames. So these are the three things that it can affect. Let's have a look at how to implement it. So it's very simple. I've just got a blank notebook here, but normally you'd want to do this in a notebook with your computation. And we can start by making that cell a SQL cell, or you can left click here, just click on Spark SQL so that Fabric knows that you're giving it a, a SQL command. And we're going to access this parameter here, which is spark.ms.autotune.querytuning.enable. And we're going to set that to true. So if we just do that, and so there you go. It's as simple as that. Now, the next the next time that your workbook runs, it's going to try and optimize the configuration of Spark to make that workload run even quicker. So what are some of the benefits of this? Well, obviously, there's going to be benefits and use cases for saving you time and money. It's going to use less resources if you have a more efficient configuration of Spark for this specific workload. It also means that you're not going to have to be doing that manual configuration of your Spark environment yourself. And if you're not an expert in Spark, that might be a little bit overwhelming. So this auto-tuning functionality is really good for you because you can just set that to true and you can leave it in the hands of Microsoft to update that configuration automatically. So if you're a bit curious about how that actually works, then if you flick over to the documentation, 
it gives a bit of an explanation about how they do this auto-tuning. So it's basically a machine learning problem. They have historical data about all of your run times, run statistics and the workload statistics and all of the configuration settings that you have in a historical basis. And then they're just going to do an optimization. And so they have a trained machine learning model and they are basically looking for the shortest predicted execution time. So they run this machine learning algorithm, they predict it on your specific workload and it's going to return an optimal set of configuration settings. And it's going to automatically set those to whatever the output of the model is. That's kind of like the overview of what this ML model is doing here. So that's basically it. Very simple, just a quick way to auto-tune your Spark configurations. If you don't want to be getting your hands dirty in the, in the back end of configuring Spark, it's just one line of code and that should make your notebooks run quicker and save you capacity units in the long run. Thanks very much for watching. See you tomorrow.